If George R. R. Martin is known for one thing, it's those very stylish turtle hats. If he's known for a second thing, however, it would be killing off characters. That's kind of the signature of Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire, and it's what his work is maybe best known for. The attitude of any character could die at any time. Well, this is kind of true, and there is a very high turnover rate of characters in A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones, at least when compared to contemporary fantasy shows. I think Martin gets a little bit of a bad rep in this regard. Sure, there are a lot of characters who dies, but those characters generally don't die for no reason. All deaths in the series tend to come from logical cause and effect, the result of the choices that these characters have made. Today, I'm going to examine one trend that Martin has taken in killing off characters, specifically some of the most important characters in his series. We've had 24 viewpoint characters in A Song of Ice and Fire, and the ones that have died that aren't prologues or epilogues all have died when one specific criteria was met. And today I'm going to discuss what that criteria is and how exactly it's going to apply in the winds of winter. This criteria is a pretty simple one. I actually didn't realize that it was the case until very, very recently. I think it was a month or two ago. As I said, we've had five characters die throughout the series, and all five of those characters died while another viewpoint character was nearby to witness the death or immediately see its aftermath. This makes sense from Martin's narrative perspective, as his story is so tied to these viewpoint characters. There is no chapter in A Song of Ice and Fire that isn't, that's just kind of omnipotent, omnipresent. We're always tied to a specific perspective. And if a perspective is just snuffed out without any sight of it, it's very much kind of left up in the air. We don't know what is going to happen to that person. And there's a strong chance that maybe they didn't die. Maybe something else happened and the chapter just ended. We've seen this with fake-out deaths in the past, namely Theon and uh, Davos twice over. In both of those cases, we had a character who was supposedly dead, but because there was no other point-of-view character present, they were not killed, and it ended up that they were okay. The first example of this, and perhaps the most iconic death in Game of Thrones, is that of Ned Stark. As he's killed on the steps of Baelor's Sept, we see that Arya and Sansa are also present. In the books, these events are not told from Ned's perspective. Rather, it's an Arya viewpoint chapter. We get to see her witness the death of her father, and it's not the chapter ending with him being snuffed out. We see the build-up to it, we see the event happen, and we see the fallout afterwards. This allows Martin to write about the death, kind of a more removed perspective, without having to kind of rule on exactly what's going on in terms of what happens when this character dies? Where do they go? What happens? Um, but having Arya there does allow for a better perspective on the death as a whole. What's more, Sansa is also there, so we get that confirmation through another perspective, and we get to see Sansa reflect on it in the future of her story, as it marks a pretty tremendous turning point for her. This is another kind of device that Martin uses. Not only does he like to have these characters around to confirm that they're dead, they also are often affected in numerous ways by a character's death. Another example, and slight change and iteration on this pattern, is Catelyn Stark. While no one is in the room with her while she dies, and it is through her perspective, we do have Arya outside viewing this as well. She was present for both of her parents' deaths. This is kind of a different case, as Catelyn does return from the dead, unlike Ned, unless you think he's a pigeon, which some people apparently do. Uh, he, she ends up recovering from this death three days later, and despite the fact that Arya did see uh, this event, happen outside, even though she wasn't there, she does still confirm that her mom is dead. Specifically through Nymeria's perspective, uh, I believe in her next chapter, as she wards into Nymeria in Arya's dream, and is able to retrieve her mother's body from the river, pulling it out that allows it to be eventually resurrected by Beric Dondarrion later on in the book. The next example chronologically of a point of view character watching another point of view character die is also the least important point of view character in our entire series. During A Feast for Crows, Aris Oakheart ends up dying on Ario Hota's axe. This is another example of characters clearly being present when another viewpoint dies. Aris only had one chapter, but he is in the presence of two point of view characters for his death. Both Arion Martel and Ario Hota observe this incident or kill him straight up. Uh, and I think that this very much serves to reflect on both of their stories. For Arion, it's kind of the result of her schemes led to her lover's demise, which results in a lot more caution in her Winds of Winter sample chapters, as we've seen. And for Ario Hota, this death is being pinned on Darkstar, so it shows him kind of having to be dishonest, where we've seen him be very honest in the past. And I think it creates a very interesting trajectory for both of these characters, to have witnessed or killed Ares Oakheart. The next and second to last example of this is our most controversial pick of the evening, that being Quentin Martell. I know, many think he's not dead, I do think he's dead. Despite the fact that no one was in the room with him when he got burned, and his chapter just ends with him saying, oh, we do see his corpse. We see him dying for three days in the next Barristan chapter. And this represents a similar thing to Arya's chapter 
in A Storm of Swords uh, and in uh, A Game of Thrones, where we have another character witness the aftermath or the death itself happen and see the consequences thereof. In this case, Quentin had not been a point of view character for very long, but he does end up getting killed off while in Barristan's view. I believe this is part of the reason Martin implemented Barristan as a viewpoint, as he doesn't like to have characters die without another viewpoint present. Barristan is the only person in Marine who is a viewpoint in this uh, part of the story, and to not have him there would have Quentin essentially just vanish and essentially have to tell us of this point of view character's death from maybe Masandai at a later point in the story. Lastly, we have an interesting example. We have Jon Snow's death in one of the final chapters of A Dance with Dragons. While it might seem at first glance, oh, there's no other viewpoint there, that's not quite correct. Melisandre has a single viewpoint chapter in A Dance with Dragons, and I think that that chapter is there specifically to enable this trend of Martin's. He doesn't want to kill another viewpoint character off while no other viewpoint characters are present, because Jon's death might be kind of a gray area after that otherwise. Specifically, if it ends up going on for a while and we don't hear back from Jon or for the Wall for a very long time, having Melisandre there newly introduces a viewpoint character allows us to have Jon's death and see the immediate fallout at the Wall rather than waiting for any potential resurrection that might come to him in the near future. I believe that's a big part of why Melisandre was incorporated as a point of view character in the first place, as I think she's pretty essential both to Jon's resurrection and to the story surrounding the Wall, at least in the immediate future of the Winds of Winter. With that pattern in mind, who exactly is at risk going into the Winds of Winter? Where are viewpoint characters meeting up? Specifically, first, I'm going to take a look at who I think is safe, at least in terms of characters who are not near other viewpoints. Ariel Hota is pretty far away, albeit if Martin is going to kill off a character all on his own and off-screen, it would probably be Ariel Hota, given the fact that he forgot that he was in Game of Thrones. Additionally, Daenerys seems to be fine as long as she's off on her own Dothraki Sea, so at least before she gets to Marine. Sansa is completely on her own, uh, Jaime and Brienne are together and might both be at risk, and I believe that there are a number of others who are on their own. Sam is on his own in Old Town at the moment, but Aaron Greyjoy is currently on his way there and will likely be sacrificed on Euron's ship. Given the fact that Sam is present and will likely be there for the sacrifice, it does make the fact that Aaron could die more likely, at least in my eyes. The main theory that I've used this as justification for is Barristan's death in the Winds of Winter. He is surrounded by at least two other viewpoints, and we will see full view of his demise in the Battle of Fire, at least in my eyes. We have Victarion Greyjoy, who would recognize a Knight of the Kingsguard. We have Tyrion Lannister, who knows Barristan from both of their time in King's Landing. Either of these characters would be perfect to observe the death of this very storied and legendary knight, and I think that both of them are quite likely to observe that in the future of the Winds of Winter. I also think Kenny Loggins might be heading to King's Landing, because I think it is a little bit of a danger zone going into the Winds of Winter. We have Cersei there currently, and we likely have Arion and Jon Connington at the very least heading there in the immediate future after Aegon takes Storm's End. I think that any of those three are quite likely to die while they're in King's Landing and around each other. I do think that Jon Connington will probably live at least to see Daenerys land on Westeros, as I personally believe he'll be the one to do the bells, as happens in the show. But I think that Cersei, Arion, and Jon Connington are pretty much at, at risk in King's Landing if they're there together. So what do you think of this idea? Do you think Martin will stick with it, or it's just a pattern that he's waiting to break? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. What characters do you think are safe in the Winds of Winter, and what do you think are definitely on the chopping block? I do want to do a video in the near future talking about the characters and what I think their odds of surviving the book are, and I think that this video is a pretty good precursor to that one, as I want to establish this pattern and kind of use it as a framework looking forward into the series. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. It really helps me grow the channel, and I appreciate any support. Also, leave a comment if you want to say anything, or let me know what you think of this pattern in general, like I asked earlier. And I will be back next week with more videos. Uh, thank you all so much for your time, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye!